Let's welcome the official evil insurance man of the morning show, Art Jetter, back to the program. Arthur, good morning. Good morning, Gary. Good to have you back, and thanks for passing along the info. Uh, I got these uh, individual health insurance rates in Nebraska and Iowa that are available for 2018. They're, they're just one for Nebraska, Art. That's Medica, as we know. Well, and uh, Iowa. Right. Well, well, yeah, but there are four four categories, I guess you could say, yeah. in Iowa, just one yeah. in Nebraska, and, they, and, the, and Nebraska is right. asking for a 17% increase. Correct. Uh, Iowa, anywhere from uh, 33% to 48%. So it's not a, not a pretty picture. No. Uh, what did you see? What did you see with this latest attempt that's about to die in the in the Senate? <laughs> uh, was there anything uh, likable about that in your view? Yes, but uh, can I first say, sure. Gary, that uh, the current uh, Obamacare emergency is really focused on people who buy individual health insurance through HealthCare.gov, and I think not everybody realizes that people covered by Medicare, Medicaid, or group insurance in Nebraska are not directly, acutely affected by the problems of, of uh, healthcare.gov. The problems really focus on people buying individual medical plans right. through healthcare.gov. Uh, uh, Graham Cassidy, that uh, is going to fail, uh, I think it would have been good for Nebraskans. Of course, there's always something that could come about, but I think it would have been good for Nebraskans and Iowans as it would have brought control and financing home. Frankly, I have more faith in Nebraska lawmakers and regulators than I have in the federal bureaucracies or Obamacare. Uh, you know, uh, the the good thing about uh, Graham Cassidy, it could have allowed us to fix the issue of strivers. That's people that make more than about uh, one and a half times poverty level who are sometimes asked to pay maybe a third of their income oh. just to have health insurance which, but it looks like it's dead water that, that's impractical well it's it's nuts now if you have a lot of health problems yeah. who cares you know yeah. uh you're gonna get it and uh likely if you have tremendous health problems you're gonna be subsidized but what this does is it uh big word bifurcates the marketplace so that that healthy people want to get out and uh and that that uh, that's the definition of death spiral. And that's what's happening in this individual right. health market. Yeah, and I, I've heard. Uh, I mean, this is bad enough here, but I've heard some states where it's just it's it's through the roof. I mean, it's through the moon the the increases that they're going to be facing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, with well, open, open and I would open. like I would like to take this moment to say uh, I think you would say that every prediction I made eight years ago when you first had me talk about Obamacare has come true. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, this is what exactly what happened. And, uh, you know, the, uh, this idea that insurance companies are profiting crazily uh, by all this is, uh, is uh, lunacy because, uh, you know, if they were, they wouldn't have all quit the marketplaces. They would have stayed in it. But they've lost hundreds of millions of dollars, maybe billions of dollars. And, uh, and the worst is yet to come. Well, let me ask you a, a, a basic question because yes, sir. we hear all of these predictions that Obamacare, is, it, it seems to be true to me, uh, is in a death spiral, and there's no way this can continue. It's unsustainable, and yet it's, here it is. It's going to still be on the books. So where does this go? Where, what, 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 is the ultimate, what is the ultimate demise or the ultimate end to Obamacare? <laughs> well, well, at some point, it's going to get to the point where uh, individuals, well, the... Uh, uh, Lamar Alexander and Patty Murphy have a bill that will be a short-term fix by dumping more money into the system mm. to encourage insurance companies to to uh, stay in that individual market. Now, when when we say Obamacare, we're talking about all health insurance, and we're talking about group health insurance, too. And that's not going to have the same kind of impact no. uh, immediately that this individual market has. But, uh, you know, with the... Uh, uh, Alexander Murphy proposal. Uh, it isn't. I don't know that it really is a formulated yet. But uh, the idea is to. So far, the only idea is to dump some more money in, and that that could be a short term fix, or it could be like pouring gasoline on a fire. And uh, uh, so uh, that, that's oh. that's open to speculation. Whatever they come up with, what what uh, what Obamacare allows is uh, state waivers. And, uh, you know, Iowa has one, give us the money and we will have a flat credit to get the healthy people back in the exchange. 
Now, that what's important about that is that's the opposite of the death spiral. Yes, that's that's getting healthy people in who subsidize people who really need to pay for health care. Right. And uh, you know, Senator Sass has the a proposal that we uh, eliminate mandates for uh, counties that uh, only have one health care plan. Wow. Well, of course, that's all of Nebraska and <laughs> yeah, all of Iowa. That's right. <laughs> By the and, way, uh, our gener- that, that could fix it. Our generous with us just quickly before we run. Um, when, when you look at, uh, at what's, what's happening here, uh, and some people are simply going to say, I can't buy this. I can't afford this. I don't have right. the money for this. Right. What, what is the penalty now uh, for not having insurance under, under ACA? Well, I think it's 2.5%. 2 percent Modified adjusted risk because that's, uh, I'm not looking at it. So uh, yeah. it could be awful. Okay. But, but then again, who knows if it's going to be implemented? Who knows if people are actually going to pay it this coming year? Well, then what you know, happens? Don't they, they take it out of your... Well, of course, if you don't pay income tax, they can't do that. What do they do then? How do they get the money? <laughs> <laughs> the government says you have to have this or we're taxing you, this, we're fining you, and you don't pay the fine, then what? Well, that's a great question. Thank you. Uh, I think... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't think you go to prison. Yeah. What a mess. Art, thanks. Always good to have you with us. Appreciate it very much. Art Jetter Company. That's Art Jetter, the official evil insurance man of the morning news. I wonder if he's off to another evil insurance sure man's convention is. in the Bahamas. Evil insurance convention. Well, Probably a, not. They had a hurricane yeah. there, so they might have to move it to Disney World or something. Right, Rosie. That's quarter where past, all the evil insurance agents get together. Quarter past eight.